Hi there everyone and welcome to the Fall 2022 University of Rochester Student Government Elections video. I'm Garrett Briggs, the current Fall Elections Coordinator, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the processes that you need to go through to become a candidate and vote in this upcoming election cycle. This video is going to discuss a few things, including what positions are open, the differences between them, the requirements for becoming a candidate, including the forms that you need to fill out ahead of time, what you're allowed to do during the campaign period, election violations and how to avoid them, and finally, how you and your friends can vote in the upcoming student government election. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first question that we need to clear up is the question about who is allowed to run. Well, in our fall election cycles, we only allow the incoming class into the University of Rochester to run for any position in student government. So for the upcoming fall elections, the only people that can become candidates are the class of 2026. The next question becomes, if you're a member of the class of 2026, well, what positions are you allowed to run for? There are only two positions that you can run for in the fall election cycle. The first is the position to become a class senator, and the second is the position to become a class council member. So let's go ahead and talk more about these in depth. The first position that we are going to talk about is the position of becoming a class senator. If you want to run and become involved in the Senate, the main thing that you're going to be focusing on is creating legislation that makes the lives of students better. So these are the people that can address problems, say, in the academic realm of student government. They can address problems with student organizations or student organization finance. They can become involved in committees such as diversity, equity, inclusion, and they can create legislation impacting those sectors. However, if you are a senator, you are not allowed to become involved in programming for any of the classes. You will solely be focusing on creating legislation that can positively impact the lives of students. However, say you were more interested in creating class council events, such as creating class barbecues or creating class soccer games or dodgeball tournaments. Well, then you would more likely wanna run for class council. Class council are the people that can create those sorts of activities meant to increase class bonding and make sure that everyone is comfortable with one another. However, class council is not involved in writing or passing legislation or becoming involved in student association government committees like the senators are involved with. If you run for Senate, you can also run for class council. So if you want, you can choose to do both of them. However, if there's one you're not interested in, you certainly don't have to run for it. Now that we've talked about the differences between the two positions, let's talk about how to sign up. So there are two main things that you need to do before you become a candidate on any of the ballots. The first thing you need to do is you need to go on the student association website and you need to find the link to the election rules quiz. Once you click on that, you're going to be given a 10 question quiz that asks you questions about campaign procedures and things like that. You need to get all 10 questions right and have 100% accuracy on the quiz before you are allowed to run as a candidate. But don't worry, I've made the questions very simple. However, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Otherwise, all the answers can be found on the Student Association's government's website. Once you complete that quiz, you're going to be emailed a link to the next thing you have to do, which is the candidacy form. On that candidacy form, you're going to be allowed to explain why you're running as a candidate and what your platform is. After you complete that form, it's going to be sent to me and you are going to be officially enlisted to become a candidate in the upcoming election cycle. With your information, I'm going to go ahead and put it live on the SA government election page so that your friends can read about it and the rest of your class can understand why you're running. Afterwards, I'm going to make that page live on September 7th, one day after it's due, so that everyone can see what your candidacy is about. Now that you're a registered candidate, let's talk about when you can advertise yourself to voters. The only time that you are allowed to make campaign posts or to 
endorse yourself or others for their candidacy is during the campaign period. It's super important that you listen to this part because if you post any sort of an advertisement or let anyone know on social media or in big group settings that you are running as a candidate before the campaigning period starts, you are breaking a rule. You are not allowed to campaign or do any campaigning publicly until the start point on September 8th at 10 o'clock a.m. After that, you're allowed to post on social media and campaign as much as you want until September 16th at 11.59 p.m., which is when voting closes and the election is over. If you campaign at any point before these times, you are going to receive penalty points. And penalty points are bad because they could put you at a disadvantage by giving you sanctions that might take away your ability to publicly campaign for a certain period of time. But we're going to talk about penalty points in a second. Before we do that, let's talk about the types of campaigning that are allowed. The first is in-person campaigning. And this includes stuff like putting flyers in buildings, placing chalk on sidewalks, or talking to people about your campaign through word of mouth. In addition, a lot of people choose to do online campaigning, which is includes things like making your own candidacy website, creating online flyers or posters to post on Instagram or other social media platforms, or engaging in direct messaging with other students. Now, all of these things have rules and limitations that you should read about on the student government website to make sure that you are following all of the rules and that you aren't docked for misbehaving in the election. However, these are the basic types of campaigning that can help get your candidacy off the ground. Now, as with any good system, there's a couple of limitations that we need to talk about. These are things that you need to make sure you are never doing while you are campaigning. The first includes never knocking on doors or placing unrequested flyers where they aren't asked. This is an invasion of privacy for other students, and we want to make sure that we are being as respectful as possible when we are campaigning. In addition, you should make sure never to deface the flyers of other candidates or never to harass other candidates. And finally, this goes for everything. You should never, ever, ever post anything discriminatory in any way whatsoever. You will be kicked out of the election cycle and possibly receive much harsher punishments. Now, going on to the online limitations, you are not allowed to campaign on the class group pages. For example, if you have a class Facebook page that you're a part of, you're not allowed to go in there and post to everyone that you are running your own campaign. This is con considered an academic setting and you are not allowed to campaign in academic settings. In addition, you are only allowed to DM people who follow you back. So. For Instagram chats, for you to send a DM campaigning to someone, you must check before you send that DM that they are following you back as well. However, you are allowed to campaign in group chats such as Discords, GroupMe, or Snapchat group chats because any single member can leave that group at any point, so we don't consider it unsolicited messaging. It's important to keep in mind that if you break any of these limitations, you will receive penalty points that could disqualify you from the election cycle. Next, I want to talk about some other things that are also not allowed. The first is that you're never allowed to spend more than $40 on campaigning. It doesn't matter if you're running for just Senate, class council, or both, you are never allowed to spend more than $40, and this includes in things that are donated to. Next, you're not allowed to publicize or announce your candidacy before the campaign period starts. And I just want to reiterate it because that's something we touched on earlier, but it's an important point. In addition, you are never allowed to engage in any sort of quid pro quo deals. So you're never allowed to offer a position in exchange for support, and you're never allowed to offer other goods in exchange for support, such as money or an equivalent. Finally, and this is a very important one, Keep in mind that all of your campaign assistants should know all of the rules at all times, because if your campaign assistant breaks a rule, we are going to be holding you accountable as the candidate by giving you penalty points. 
So make sure they know the rules so that you don't get any penalty points or sanctions placed against your campaign. Now, let's talk about what to do if you want to report a rule violation. The first thing you need to do is you need to go onto the SA government website and fill out the elections violations form. That form is going to ask you what rule violation took place, who the candidate was, and it's going to offer you the ability to upload pictures or other documentation to explain what the violation is. After I've received those materials, I'm going to go through it and consult with the election violations committee on whether or not it is in fact a rule violation. If it is a rule violation, the candidate will be notified and they are going to receive a set amount of penalty points in addition to possibly a sanction. Now, let's go ahead and talk about voting. This year, voting will start on September 15th at 10 a.m. and end on September 16th at 11.59 p.m. To vote, we will be offering affirmative voting ballots, which means that a voter can vote for as many candidates as they want. To get that ballot link, we are going to be emailing it to all eligible voting students and you as a candidate can email it out to your friends as well. Remember that when you're sending these ballots out though, that you only send them to the class of 2026 because they are the only ones that can vote in this fall election. Now, if you ever have any questions about the SA government elections, you can feel free to email me at sa underscore elections at u.rochester.edu. In addition, you can always visit our SA government website at the link below. Now that we've gotten through everything, all I have left to do is wish you good luck and happy campaigning. Also, remember that if you don't get elected through this election cycle, you can always join student government through the open positions and committee placements that will be posted on the student association website throughout the year. So once again, Happy campaigning, and I can't wait to see you around. Thank you.